Right, so tear down time. We've already actually taken the back cover off here. It's nice and easy to take apart. Back cover off. Then one screw just in the middle there. And then. whole lot slides out from there. And those initial impressions of this thing, this thing is built like an absolute battleship. You've got a full steel case around the outside here. Folded steel with, looks like actually spot welded together at the side, something like that. This thing's pretty solid, it's going to give you a nice lot of uh, EMC protection here. Right, put that away. And then when you take it out, this whole lot here, you've got a complete folded frame now made out of aluminium that's got to be 2 mil, 80 thou thick. This is a solid lump of engineering here. Of course, the first impression here is you've got quite a lot of empty space inside this. And I assume what they've done here is to actually make sure this fits the same, the standard ham egg form factor, which makes all their instruments stackable. And obviously, I think this is designed more around the old analog oscilloscopes' this form factor. It seems a shame, really, to have an instrument that really isn't that big in a box that is. So, sort of quick look through round here. We've got uh, front panel inputs all here. We've got very nice quality shrouded 4mm jacks on the top here. Nice solder connections. Done with some very thick, very solid wire there. All of them bundled together through this uh, plastic tubing you've got here into the front panel. And we've just got these coming into uh, screw terminals here. It's a nice way of doing it, you know, if you need to take the board out later, very straightforward, you're not mucking around desoldering connections. Also, at the front panel here, we've also got the um, fuse holder connections on that, made using uh, spade terminals, fast on terminals. Again, very nice quality. Crimping has been done very nicely on that. The rest of the front panel here, we've got an actual separate board for. Looks, yeah, nice, yeah, very straightforward board. They're mostly all just uh, seven segment displays, and that's what gives you the really nice, bright display on it. And then we've got a bit of ribbon cable coming back here, and driven the XB back towards the main board in the bottom corner. So, what have we got on here? So you've always got sort of power input side down here and comes via a big nice proper main switch and I like that, it's got a really nice solid fill this main switch and okay it's actually driven by a piece of uh, bent metal wire here so it's just the mechanical force as I actuate the front switch pushes down the bit of, me bit of metal wire and pushes the front lever there so that nice, that's, you're going to get a proper when this is it, when this is turned off, you're actually going to get no current or drawn from the mains, which is a really nice bit of test equipment. And especially, you know, you're not going to be using it every day, even in a professional lab. So it's nice just to actually have that properly turned off. And got a nice inductor there. It's been through C stiffication on this. Interesting. I think this is a, or well, this is a linear power supply here. If you notice, just down the bottom, you've actually got a. Uh, changeover, two pole changeover switch down here and that's actually an old school uh, voltage selector method so you either select it for 230 nominal or 115 volt nominal input. So down the bottom here we've got a couple of transformers let's take a small one first of all, small one comes out of here a couple of uh, AC outputs there and comes out to this section up here we've got Microprocessor, which is an NXP. Oh, we've looked this up actually already. This is um, an AT51 architecture microprocessor. Quite nice. Crystal here. And then you've got an uh, integrated circuit up the top here. Right, okay, so. Oh, M27C256, which is going to be an EEPROM chip. You notice they've got a label over here, but they're not really attempted to obscure the parts at all. The difference between German and Chinese manufacturing. <laughs> well, in this case, it's uh, Chetler's vacuum made actually. It's uh, handmade now. Right, so we've got, uh, yeah, multiplied down here. What have we got? 
Aha, so we've clearly got a gap. This is the logic section here, and this is going to be more the power section. We've got three optocouplers here. And right, so let's go jump back a bit. So this is so power input section here. We've got some seriously thick tracks, and because this thing is rated to take up to 16 amps of current continuously, this is a 8 kilowatt power meter. So you've got some serious amount of power running through here. And handle power, invented at fault. We've got a couple of fuses here. These both look like ceramic, yeah, they are proper ceramic fuses, presumably HRC fuses. So that's really nice to see. And in fact, talking protection device, we've also got a uh, metal oxide varistor down here, which goes down. Yeah, we've got a track going straight down to the chassis ground on there. So if you get a nice short overload, that will go nicely short. Make sure your fuses get blown instead of electronics. Interesting, you've also got an actual relay up here. I wonder this might be a protection device. Got a nice big diode by it as well. Might well be part of the protection circuitry. And see if we can get the camera angle on here. That's going to be your shunt resistor there. So it's a nice big bit of wire, calibrated wire, with known resistance. And that's going to be your uh, current out of there. So this, so if this is measuring current using the uh, shunt resistor technique, that must mean you're actually getting a volt. You know, you, you're effectively reading off current by getting your voltage output. That could be interesting later on in the circuit. And also, well, two bridge rectifiers by your input there, because of course power doesn't really mind which way it's flowing. So uh, yeah, you might as well rectify it all. No point having plus or minus out on there. Right, so you've got a nice big of uh, nice big bit of analog processing circuitry here. A couple of Maxim chips here, very big ones. These are RMS to DC converters. Nice quality chips they're used in here. So you know, if you've got an AC waveform, you know, you're trying to uh, work out what actual DC power that equates to. These chips are going to do it for you. And then just in the middle of here, we've got analog devices chip, a 633, I think it is. That's an analog multiplier, so that's actually working out the power just by multiplying the signal right in the analog domain. So it's, as you can see, and the board construction is very nice. It's quite a straightforward board, and it only looks like a two-layer board to us. And um, yeah, it's a mixture of some fairly large surface mount chips. You know, we're talking sort of SOIC size, and still some sort of through-hole stuff. But on the actual soldering, the actual construction of the board is very high quality and you definitely pass IPC 610 class 3 and um, I think it's probably above that standard to be honest no traces of flux or anything as far as we can see nothing like that, the board's been well cleaned all the soldered joints look very nice indeed all properly flowed and even things like the um, uh, the actual alignment of passives and ICs is absolutely spot on clearly got some very good quality control going on there so, and yeah, in terms of the actual quality of the chips, and we haven't looked up all of them, but we've looked up some ba basic analog, uh, sorry, operational amplifiers, the uh, analog multipliers, some other chips, the optocouplers. All of those are from yeah, well-known brands. They're good quality chips. Certainly no kit cheap, cheap stuff in here at all. Right, and then got one last board up here. So this is actually your serial and USB outputs off this board, so running off a bit of ribbon cable, which comes right from the uh, logic section over here. This actual board actually looks a bit more complicated here. You've got an uh, Atmel microprocessor on there, and an FTDI chip, presumably doing your... I was about to say doing the uh, serial conversion, but it's actually right by the USB chip. Yeah, so presumably it's sending a serial data straight across from the microprocessor through the FTDI chip out on the USB connection there. Not entirely sure why they've got that on the microprocessor on. Some kind of data conversion across there. Anyway, yeah, it's like I say, very nicely bored, very nicely well, ma sorry, well made board. The power supplies are linear, so it's going to be very nice low noise, you know, not going to interfere with your measurements at all. Everything's nicely heat synced, well uh, constructed. And not sure we'll get the camera on here, but it's actually, there's actually a little uh, plate of metal just on there. Can we see it on the camera? Looks like we can do. 
So that's actually just, we've got one end of it just bent down, and that's soldered onto the uh, tab of a SOT 223 package. Nice little heat sink. We've tried putting some power through this, and yeah, it doesn't really look like anything gets too hot. On I mean, this size of the case, no real surprise. And to be honest, you could probably just bolt the stuff to the case if you're really worried about thermal issues on this thing. Yeah, so really nice construction on here. Nice and easy to open, good to work on. So we'll say it's uh, got a whole row of uh, trim pots down here. Slightly unusual to see those. I assume that's um, you know, you're going to be looking at through those for uh, calibration, that sort of thing. So it's quite like the fact you know, it's a lot of the modern oscilloscopes, that sort of thing. All the calibration is done actually with digital. So yeah, it's actually held in a memory and then blasted back out through a um, digital to analog converter. So yeah, you might actually see a bit of drift on this with time, well, I say with time, you know, we're talking over the scan of years here. But yeah, overall, superb construction.